Hi everyone, I'm Craig, and today I'd like to talk about some pretty interesting things that were happening at Fort Mackinac and elsewhere across the country in the 1880s. Now the 1880s is a, a pretty interesting time for the United States Army because it's a time of change and modernization. In the 1880s, the Army was undergoing a variety of modifications, a variety of transformations that would change it from the old Army that had existed really from the beginning of the United States up through the Civil War and it would turn it into something that would more closely resemble the modern United States Army of today. Now, a big part of that modernization effort was an overhaul of communication systems. Now, up to that point, and still continuing for a little ways into the future, the primary means of communication had been verbal, so people talking to one another or hand-delivering letters. Uh, music was also used for longer-distance communication, so things like fife and drum and bugle. But those communication methods uh, were not always the, the best, and they, they weren't always uh, very effective, especially over long distances. Someone can only run or ride a horse so far so fast, and music can only be heard so far. So the Army was looking for ways to send messages over even longer distances. Uh, and there's actually a whole set of signaling tactics that came into play during the 1880s. And at Fort Mackinac, we know that soldiers would have been drilling with those signal tactics uh, uh, on a regular basis. After 1885, every fort across the country was required to have a signal detachment. So that would be at least one officer and a few enlisted men who on a regular basis would go out and drill with the most modern signaling tactics. Now, Fort Mackinac itself had already been connected to the outside world via telegraph in 1883, uh, but for more practical, in-the-moment battlefield signaling, they had a few options. Uh, they could uh, use a heliograph, which is essentially a mirror using sunlight uh, to send basically telegraphic messages. Those heliographs would actually have something uh, resembling a telegraph key that the operator could tap out and it would send flashes of light. They could also use lamps at night, uh, but they could also use signal flags. Uh, this is something that would be visible uh, over pretty long distances, uh, and there's a pretty simple code associated with the use of signal flags. Uh, and so let's just take a basic look at that code and then actually try and communicate using a signal flag. Now, by the 1880s, there were a number of different codes in use, mostly related to which signaling device was being used. For a signal flag like this, we're going to be using the Army code adopted in 1886. And it's a very simple binary code. It supposes that a soldier starts off with the signal flag straight in front of them, straight up, just like this. This is kind of a neutral position. If that soldier were to dip the flag to their right and back up again, that signals the number one. If they dip the flag to their left, that signals the number two. And by combining those numbers, one or two, in different sequences, you can spell out different words, because every letter of the alphabet has a specific sequence associated with it. So, for instance, the letter A is merely one, two. And you can see that this might be a relatively slow process, but if you're well-trained, as those soldiers would have been thanks to their regular drills, you could pretty easily send messages over long distances. So let's see if you can decipher a flag message right now.
Well, hopefully you were able to decipher that signal flag message and figure out that what I was trying to say was Mackinac. And again, soldiers would have been drilling with signal flags just like this, sending simple messages like that as part of a regular drill at Fort Mackinac, perhaps every week in the 1880s. Now, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about Army life at Fort Mackinac at that time, uh, I'd invite you to come visit us. We'll open for the summer in May of 2021. We've got lots of activities taking place at the fort, as well as exhibits scattered throughout the 14 original buildings. If you're interested in learning more about Fort Mackinac or would like to purchase tickets, you can visit our website, MackinawParks.com. Now, if you enjoyed this program or some of the other online content that we've been generating, I would also invite you to check out Mackinac Associates. They're the friends group who makes so much of what we do possible. They help fund programs like this one, as well as programs and exhibits throughout Mackinac State Historic Park's uh, historic sites. So if you enjoyed what you saw here and if you've, if you've enjoyed visiting Fort Mackinac and our other museums, please do consider joining Mackinac Associates today. Otherwise, hope to see you on Mackinac Island sometime soon.